So up until now, we've mostly focused on one variable at a time. For example, uh, this is the results of a class survey on how extroverted students feel that, that they were. This was actually two different stats classes combined. Um, and here's a histogram. We know that we can figure out the mean. It's going to be somewhere in the center of that, maybe around 60 or something. Uh, we know we can find out the standard deviation of this. And, and we know a little bit about that variable itself then. We can do the same thing for, here's some data, same students, uh, and they reported their level of loneliness on a scale of zero to 100. Both of these are on a scale of zero to 100. Um, the 105 here is just a little carryover because of how the, um, the bars were set, but both of them are on a scale of zero to 100. So let's, let's take a bar here, for example. Let's take this one right here. This tells us that three students had a loneliness rating between 67 and 83, basically. So there were three students that rated their loneliness levels between a 67 and 83. We don't know exactly where, but somewhere in there. Similarly, we can say five students rated their level of extrovert, how extroverted they are, as somewhere between 52.5 and 70. What we can't tell by looking at these single variable analyses are how they connect together. And that's where things really start to get interesting in statistics is when you put the variables together. So, okay, uh, this tells me that in general, the class might be a little more extroverted than introverted. Um, that loneliness, uh, most students aren't feeling that lonely, but also that there are a decent handful in the class who are feeling extremely lonely. But I have no idea whether the extroverted students are more likely to feel lonely, or maybe the more extroverted they are, the less likely they are to feel lonely, or maybe there's no connection whatsoever between how introverted and extroverted they are. And you can start to come up with theories. It's fun to, to make predictions. Well, extroverted people always like being around other people, and so maybe they're not lonely that much, or maybe being around other people uh, they still have like a deeper sense of loneliness inside, whereas introverts have a, just a few close friends, but maybe aren't so lonely. Um, you can come up with all theories, and that's where it's fun to test them out. So here's what we do um, to take a look at the correlation. We, we plot this, we plot this on a, a chart. So each data point here is a student. So this, this particular dot here is a student who rated himself or herself uh, about a 40 on extroverted scale and about a, I don't know, 65, 70 on the loneliness scale. But that is a, a student that we have data for two variables on. Uh, similarly, this student here, we know that their extroverted rating was about 60, but that they weren't rating themselves as very lonely at all, maybe a 10. Notice that it, I think we have, I don't know, about 50, 60 dots here, 50 to 60 uh, students in the sample. Um, we couldn't just ask, say, 50 students from my morning class how extroverted they are, and then a different 50 students, uh, maybe from JMU or from an afternoon EMU class, how lonely they are. Um, that wouldn't work because we need to pair the data. We need to somehow say, okay, this dot, we know their extroverted data rating or the data value, and we know their loneliness data route. If we just have 60 of each, we could do something like this. We could plot a histogram for each variable, but we couldn't correlate it unless we actually have data for each individual on both variables. That's what it requires to do a correlation. So, okay, we set it up. We have these 50, 60 students pointed here. Um, there's a fairly mathematical procedure for coming up with what's called the best fitting line. And that's just basically trying to get as close to all the points as possible. There's, there's going to be uh, a line that does that better than any other line, or at least as good as any other line. And then that line is going to give us what's called an R squared value. Um, the R squared value in English is saying, okay, every student is, has different levels of loneliness. You know, some are really high, some are really low. What we want to know is what portion of that variation in loneliness, what portion of those different values in loneliness is somehow connected, not necessarily caused, 
but somehow connected to their differences in extroversion. So what percent, r squared value answers the question, what percent of the variation in y can be explained by the x variable? Uh, and in this case, what percent of the variation in loneliness can be explained by how extroverted a student is? Um, so that, that's our r squared value. Um, let's talk about, uh, well, let me show you two, two slides here. One is how it's calculated. So this is how the correlation, we say the correlation coefficient or r comes from this calculation. Please do not worry about this, this calculation at all. Um, you should know strength, direction, and form. What are we talking there? Strength is how closely are the points hugging a single line. So back up here, uh, the strength was very, very weak. I mean, we had our best fitting lines, but the, the points were all over the place. They were not hugging that line. So the closer the points are to the line, the stronger the correlation is. And then we're talking about direction. This is a downhill or a negative. This is a negative correlation because the line, best fitting line is, is sloping downwards. And then um, the last thing we want to know is form. Like, is it even in a linear shape or is it a different type of shape? Uh, and this, honestly, we can't really tell. This is a kind of a whole cloud of dots. But sometimes it's pretty clear that it's like a parabola shape. Sometimes it's more of a, a linear shape. That's what's important. The, the actual values here um, don't necessarily mean it's important. Now, what you can do is it does tell you that with any set of individuals that you have two variables, you have a measured on two variables, you can always create a correlation. That doesn't mean that it's meaningful. We'll look at some very unmeaningful correlations, but you can always make the calculation. We have to use our brains to decide if this is something meaningful to measure or not. So let's take a look at how these correlations might appear. Um, so first of all, a correlation of zero is the weakest correlation. Correlations run between negative one at its lowest and positive one, negative one to positive one. But negative one is not the lowest correlation. Um, the, if you don't have any correlation at all, that's a correlation of zero. The two variables are just not connected at all. And that's about what we saw. Um, this is our value, we'd have to square it. Or conversely, when we had our r squared of 0 0.031, we would want to take the square root of that. We could take the square root of this value to get our r. Let me do that just so you can uh, see. And you can use Google as a calculator, by the way. So we would just put in square root of 0 0.031. And this would give us an r value of 0.176. So the correlation coefficient r here is about 0.18. And since it's going negative, we'd want to say negative 0.18. So when you take the square root, that gives you the number 0.18 but you still need to figure out, is it positive or negative? The R squared isn't gonna tell you that. So this would be a R value of negative 0.18. Uh, and you can see here, negative uh, 0.3 starts to get a little stronger, a little closer to a line. Negative 0.7, you're really starting to see the line. And negative 0.99, you essentially have that line straight through the points. You can see that line because that's a very strong correlation. It's a negative correlation, but very strong. Over here, you see a 0.5, so a, a positive 0.5, medium strength. Uh, 0.9 starting to get fairly strong, and this is a positive correlation. That's why it's positive 0.9. So it gives you a sense. Now, we're going to get some practice with this uh, playing around with the positive, the negative, that scale in between negative 1 and, and 1 um, in just a second. So some, some thoughts. I would encourage you, even though we haven't talked about these yet, just pause the video and give this your best shot. Because if you try to think through it first and then see the answers, you retain the knowledge better. So go ahead and pause. Okay, and let's take a look at the answers now. Swapping the explanatory and response has no value, no effect on the R value. In other words, if we took extroverted uh, our loneliness on the bottom, extroverted on the side, and then we swapped them. So um, lonely or extroverted was on the bottom, loneliness on the side. Uh, 
you're going to have exactly the same R value. The equation of your trend line, that line, that best fitting line, that regression line, that's going to be different. But the R value itself, the correlation coefficient, and then certainly the R squared, because R squared comes from the R value, those are going to be the same um, whether you, you swap them or not. Um, linear correlation, so when we talk about this correlation, correlation coefficient R, should only be used when the points are reasonably in a line. For example, if you have a really parabola shape, you shouldn't use linear correlation. Linear correlation uh, should only be used when we when we have the points roughly in a line or think that the variables could be as one tends to go up the other one tends to go up uh, correlation is not resistant so it's you it's like the mean and standard deviation in fact one of the reasons you can tell it's not uh, resistant is because it uses the mean and standard deviation of the formula again we don't need to know the formulas but we can see the mean and standard deviation showing up and we know that those are easily influenced by outliers. So the same is true of correlation. Uh, it's not resistant. It's not a resistant measure of um, connection between two variables. So it can be highly affected by outliers. Um, this we'll get into much more. Correlation is very mathematical. As long as you have the data, you can calculate a correlation. To make that next step and say that variable A is actually causing variable B, that extroversion is causing loneliness or that loneliness is causing extroversion, um, that requires a bit more. So correlation is evidence towards that, um, but it's certainly not the same thing. There's a big jump in between correlation and causation that one is causing the other. Um, so Another thing to notice is when you do have a positive correlation, you'll always see the trend line going up. You'll always see a positive R. So for these data points here, notice that on the positive ones, on these two, you can see that the trend line is going up. We call this a positive correlation. On these, it's a little harder to see it up here in the negative 0.3, but we do have a negative correlation. Uh, trend line is, is going down. OK, so I think at this point, it's good to have a little bit of practice. So I'm going to get a correlation game here. And the link to this game is on, on Moodle. Um, what you'll do before you even start, you'll scroll down to do your ID, and you'll put in DS15. Click Go. And that way, I uh, can't see it real well here, but we'll all be on the same scoreboard. Uh, and then that'll allow me to get the same, the top few scores, some extra credit here on the on the next quiz. OK, so what do we do here? If we're looking at these four plots and four correlations, first of all, we notice that one is extremely positive, and it's the only one that's positive at all. So there should be one set of points where you see a trend line going uh, pretty strongly up. And that, that one's pretty clearly this one right here. Uh, and then of the other three, they're all negative. Um, there's one that's fairly medium or, or weakish. Two of them are pretty strong. And one's this one right here, yeah, you can kind of see that it's going down, but it, it's pretty hard to see the line. Whereas these two are a little more clear. Between these two, one of them is very strong here, the negative 0.84, and one not so strong. To me, this one's looking like it's hugging the points a little more. So I'm going to put that as negative 0.84 and negative 0.72. I'll check. Because I got all four of them right, I get to continue. I have a score of four, plus I get to continue. Now here, uh, this is all randomized, so I got really unlucky with the, the 0.83s. But let's say I, I miss, miss some of these anyway. I checked the answer, uh, and then I put my name. So you can see which ones I, I got right and wrong. And I got six right before I got out. And then, then I can just start all over again at zero. And if you get on the scoreboard, it'll, it'll register there. Um, yeah, give that a try. After you've played this a few times, I think you start to get a sense of the positive, negative, and what a strong or weak uh, correlation looks like. All right, have fun.